Okay, so now you should be able to see how important ontology is to the subject matter of demonology and exorcism. Um, so much of what we talk about here when we discuss things like angels and demons comes back down to the idea of what is real. This puts us into the debate on the spectrum between belief and actuality. And then we have to ask ourselves, at what point is something no longer real? We tend to, as human beings, as discussed before, see the material world as what is real and everything else as being imaginary. So the world inside your head is imaginary, the world outside your head is real. Um, but that is fundamentally flawed because really what you're talking about is the difference between something corporeal and something incorporeal. And we know that the universe is filled with incorporeal real things. Um, color, x-rays, vibration, uh, geometry are all abstractions. But we know they exist, but they don't have any corporeal form. So we can't really decide that, that, that reality is based on that. Reality, therefore, is based on what is true. But then how do we determine that? Well, think about it from this vantage point. Um, if we're looking at, if you're a good cook, I like to cook. So if you're, if you're a good cook, you can make recipes in your head. You might never have um, written them down in a book or um, even made the dish, but you can have them in your head. Does that mean the dish doesn't exist? I mean, you, you can probably even decide what it tastes like based upon um, how you've put it together inside your mind. But is it not real just because it hasn't actually been made? Um, and then what about if you're a musician and you come up with a musical piece that you've never put down to paper, you've never had your orchestra play or had a singer sing, but it's all in your mind. Does that mean it's not real? Does that mean the song doesn't exist? At what point does it become real? Well, corporeality is not when it becomes real. You know, it becomes real when it's manifest in either an incorporeal or a corporeal way. And the same is true for us. As we saw in the law of personification, there are, um, once energy reaches a certain level of complexity, it can then be called a being because then it starts to manifest aspects of the universe in which it was created. One of those is fundamental and divine, which is um, sentience. So if we're looking at sentience as a complex form, um, sometimes it is very dense in the form of a, a body, like a, a being, a human being in, in this example, or sometimes it's completely ethereal, incorporeal, in the sense of a thought form, or a topa, or an egregore in the form of like an angel or a demon, a personified aspect, because that's how we relate to it. We relate to it through something that we can respond to personified being that we relate to the universe based upon how we experience it. So real is manifest out of experience.